and welcome to Kirsty Knits and Sews. My name is Kirsty, and this is my little corner of the internet where I talk about what I've been making. Now normally I say this is mostly a knitting podcast with occasionally some other things popping in, but I'm not sure I can actually say that today. We have a lot of different things and some things that I really haven't done much of before but I'm really, really enjoying. So I'm excited to share with you what I've been up to. It has also been a while since my last episode because I've been away, which means that instead of going through all of my whips in order from when I started to when I finished, oh, sorry, earliest started like I normally do, I'm going to do it in a different timeline. <laughs> I'm going to show you them in order of how I've worked on them because it just makes more sense to me at the moment. Um, I live in Zershof in Poland with my husband and two kids. And... Anything I talk about that is knitting or crochet related, there will be a project page in Ravelry for that. And it will be linked below. So if you have any questions about knitting or crochet related projects, you can check that out. If you have questions about not knitting or crochet related projects, just pop it in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. I'm coming to you from my craft corner closet again. Um, just because I'm really finding this a convenient place to record. It's away from my daughter when she's napping so that I'm not disturbing her and the lighting is pretty good and it's comfortable. I'm on the floor and I am just surrounded by chaos. This behind me, pretty nice fabric quilts on the floor, chaos. And part of that is because it's a quiet, I mean, it's a walking closet, it's large, um, but I've been away. And so I came back and I put things in here without putting them away. I know better than that. And other things have migrated in here. I've been given things, I put them on the floor. And so the, the usable space in this place is getting smaller and smaller. I need to tackle that. And I will. And I will talk about a little bit more about decluttering and life stuff. So if you're new here, welcome. It's so good to see you. Thank you for coming and joining us. If you're a returning viewer, coming back, thank you and welcome back. It is so good to see you and I'd love for you to let me know in the comments what you're doing while you join me here. Um, I know that while I'm doing watching podcasts, sometimes I'm sitting on the couch knitting. Sometimes I'm cooking dinner, washing dishes, cleaning the house. Um, so I'd love to know what you're doing. And if you're not crafting while you watch this. I'd like to know what you're crafting in your crafting time as well. Yeah. All right. I, like I said before, it's been a while. So this will probably be a bit of a longer episode. So if you need to pause it and come back, I totally get that. I do that myself, but also, um, yeah, grab a cuppa, grab something to work on or don't and just watch because that is also okay. I have my tea. I love it. All right. I have my tea, black, no sugar. I learned to drink tea at my daddy's knee. On my daddy's knee, I would finish his cups. And so that's how I drink it. Hey dad, if you're watching. All right, I'm gonna start with stats because <laughs> My last episode I recorded and I forgot to include stats, but I realized that before I edited it. So I went back and I quickly recorded the stats intending to put them in. And then when I edited it, I forgot to. Whoops. So in March, I finished six objects. I had seven unfinished objects at the end of March, which I think was the lowest all year that I, I started the year with 10. So I think seven was the lowest I'd had all year. Um, I used one kilogram and 118 grams. I don't know how I used that much. I didn't look at the stats, but I used that much. I finished a couple of sweaters, so that's probably it. Um, and I bought 125 grams, which is really not much. Which means at the end of March, I had left in my stash 22 kilograms, 543 grams, which is still more than I had at the beginning of the year, but not like not hugely more. I'm doing pretty well at using my yarn without buying a huge amount. Um, I should say I'm not doing a no by year. I'm just keeping track because I know I bought a lot of yarn last year and I don't want to be 
in a position where I buy heaps and heaps and I don't use that much and I end up with in a few years with a huge stash that I just have no hope of using. That's not what I want to do. I want to keep using it and keep buying it, but try and have those numbers evening out. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm doing this. In April, I finished two items, which I will show you soon. I finished April with nine unfinished items, but I will say at one point in April, I had only five whips on the needles. Five. For me, that is so few and it felt so good. Um, but I finished with the month with nine whips, unfinished objects. Um, and if you're new here and you don't know, this doesn't count long-term scrappy blankets. It is counting one long-term scrappy project, which I'm kind of regretting and I might move that into the blanket section. But it doesn't count unfinished scrappy blankets. In April, I used 330 grams to finish those two projects and I sold 400 grams. I went to a work conference that was not craft related, um, but I had an opportunity to have a little craft store there and I sold four skeins of yarn, which was very exciting. Um, so I sold 400, no, I sold five skeins, but one of them was not. Hmm. All right. So if I dye yarn, I put it into my stash. I dyed up some yarn for the conference that I hadn't put into my stash because I was like, it will probably sell. But I did look at my stash for yarn that I had dyed that I was willing to sell. And so I sold 400 grams of yarn that had been in my stash and I sold 100 grams of yarn that I had dyed specifically for the conference. So out of my stash, it was 400 grams, um, which was total in April, 730 grams out of my stash. I bought zero grams, but I was given 50 grams. I dyed one kilo, 230 grams. Remember how I said <laughs> when I dye yarn, I count it? Yeah. Um, which means my total in was 1,280 grams. So I finished the month with 23 kilograms and 93 grams. Which, to be fair, I dyed a lot of yarn. It didn't end up as skewed as I expected it to be. But there you go. So that was about 500 grams net in, in April. And I didn't finish much. I did not finish anything since leaving for holidays. That is yarn related. So let's get into finished objects. I have a few things to show you here. In fact, I think everything I finished is here. Look at that. So where to start? I'll start with the boring one because it's a bit boring. <laughs> but you know, I finished a dishcloth. I know, right? So exciting. Um, I did this on four millimeter needles using hobby rainbow cotton eight by eight eight slash eight eight forward slash eight um i did the same pattern as cave of the crazy sock lady um i don't think it's a pattern on ravelry but in my project page i've put a link to the pattern which is a direct download from a, another site I think so if you click on the link in the notes that will take you to a direct download from a different site um yeah what can I say about this I did the no eyelets version um I think the eyelets version is less thinking but this is what Kay did and I decided to do the same I think I'm going to enjoy using it I did not enjoy knitting it and <laughs> the reason I did not enjoy knitting it is I was trying to do it on a bike so I was trying to cycle or spin or whatever you want to call it while I knit this and therefore I wasn't doing it very much every day I wasn't seeing much progress I I don't know I just wasn't doing it much and so it took a lot longer than something this size should take and I didn't enjoy it. I think for that reason. I think if I was like, I'm going to sit down and knit some dishcloths and smash them out, it would be fine. But I think because I was still looking at the pattern and trying to figure out what I was doing while, while cycling and watching Hannah Montana in Polish, 
um, yeah, it was just a bit much. So, I don't know, I'm going to put it, I haven't used it yet because I want to show you, I'm going to put it with my other cloths for wiping and dishes and things like that. And if I like it, I will make more. I have no problem with that. I have four more balls of yarn waiting and I have a little bit left from this one that I can do a scrappy one at the end. So if I like it, I'll make more. But we'll see. Um, I did do a four millimeter needle because that's what I had on a shorter needle. And I think I'd rather do it a slightly larger needle, like 4.5 millimeter. I think the pattern even says five. And I was like, I just don't have five millimeter needles. <laughs> so I chose a four. Um, so I'll probably go 4.5 or five next time. It was a very simple pattern to do. It has a couple of different options if you want to do it. Um, yeah, it's not much more to say about this. Yeah. Um, and I don't like the Robbie, the Robbie, the hobby yarn I've never used before and definitely not for dishcloths because this is my first dishcloth. I don't know how well it's going to hold up, but that was just where I could find cotton yarn easily. My next finished object is the baby blanket. Yes, I finished it. No, it did not sell. This is the Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket. It is not a rainbow, my version. I just did green and blue with a very, very soft pink. That is pink, not white. Because that's the yarn that I was given. Um, this was a product of... I was given acrylic yarn, and I don't usually use acrylic yarn, so I wanted something to do with it. Um, and I love this blanket. I've done this pattern oh so many times. I can recommend. Um, it is the Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket. I, like I've done it so many times I've lost count definitely love the pattern it is so simple once you get so the very very center is different but from this row here so center this row here you start a pattern and that pattern continues the whole way through there are two different types of rows all of the pinks and the middle one of the colours are the same. So you do two rows, a different row, two rows, a different row, two rows, a different row, two rows, a different row. But the difference between the two rows are minimal. It's just you're missing one double chain each section. Anyway, very, very simple. It's a free pattern, so I'm not spoiling anything. Um, but just go get the pattern if you like crocheting, if you like blankets, it's brilliant. The other thing I love about this pattern is you don't have to know how much yarn you have because it's a circular one. You work your way out. I had a ball of the blue and a ball of the green, a partial ball of the pink, and I just started. I decided I wanted blue on the outside, so I started with the green, blue, green, blue, and then in the end I only had enough for three rows of the blue. So I didn't even do a complete repeat. I tried to get four rows and I got maybe eight inches from the end and ran out of yarn. So I ripped back almost an entire round to finish it off with three rows. Um, but yeah, I just, I love it. Really, really great. I don't have a recipient in mind. Um, I did put it up for sale and no one bought it, which I'm not surprised paying for handmade knits and crochet things. It's, it's not really worth the money unless you really, really, really want something. Um, yeah, so that's that. I did use a 4.5 millimeter hook. I don't know if that's what the pattern recommends, but it's what I had. Uh, no, maybe it was what the pattern recommends because I have all sizes of crochet hooks in that vicinity. So there you go. Probably what the pattern recommended. Um, and I just used a metal cheap one. Maybe it was Sally Hansen, maybe it wasn't. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, so that was that. My next finished object is very, very, very dear to me. I started it, oh, maybe a month ago. Um, but I was running, and I'm calling it finished, even though it's not finished, finished. You'll understand in a minute. Um, 
I ran an embroidery workshop at the conference. Again, this, this conference was not craft related, but they wanted an opportunity for people to sit down and do something to get to know each other. It was a community building project. Um, they had a running game in one room, they had a dice game in the other room, and they wanted something for people who just didn't, weren't really game people or who wanted to do something a bit different. And they said, can you do something crafty? And I said, for how many people? And it was 75 people. And I said, oh, I can probably do embroidery for that many. There's not many things you can teach 75 people in an hour and a half, but embroidery I can probably do. And then I said, this is how much it will cost. And they said, maybe we'll do 30 people <laughs> or 35 people. Um, and then they could afford it. And then like they could afford the materials for it. And it would be easier for me to teach. I said, yep, that's brilliant. In the end, we had between 30 and 35 women who came. It was open to everyone, but only women chose to join in, and that's totally okay. Um, we had so much fun. We all sat there. We all had something in our hands to do and learn, but the conversations that happened were brilliant. Um, and so I didn't really do any of this one while I was there. I'd done a little bit beforehand, so I had something to show. Um, but most of it was actually done afterwards because after spending an hour and a half with women who were embroidering, I really wanted to do it too. <laughs> now, I've done stitch work before, I've done needlework before, um, so it wasn't new to me and I was able to teach it, but it's not something I've done a lot. And I think that's changing. So this, oh, that's showing up so beautifully. This is what I did. I love it. It is. It was just so much fun. It's a kit. I got the kit off eBay. And so the kit comes like this. It has the threads and needles and it's all already numbered. Um, and the the fabric already has the pattern on it. So there's no pattern in here to show you um, that you'll be able to pause the screen and trace or anything like that. So I'm going to show you what they do show me. And that is a finished embroidery, but it has numbers here that correspond to these ones that then tell you how many strands, what colour and what stitch pattern. And then it has instructions for the stitch patterns and how to do them. Um, and I thought it was brilliant because when you're giving it, when you're teaching people in an hour and a half, you need to give them something that they can take home and finish. You can't just be like, yeah, this is how you do everything in person. And then they get home and like, what do I do? So I was like, this is brilliant because they can all read, they can all do this. Um, they can follow the pictures, worked really well. Um, and there were a few different patterns that were available but this is the one that I chose. It was so lovely. And so what I did, um, if you saw my travel knits planning video, yeah, a lot of that went out the window and I'll talk about that a bit more later, but I just wanted to do this. And so for the rest of conference, when I had time and I knew I would be able to embroider in it, I took this. If I didn't have time, to embroider or like it wasn't a situation where embroidery would work I would take something else but by the end of conference this was almost done and so I took it on holiday and finished it on holiday and so this is just like it's so bright and cheery good memories um yeah and now I'm planning to do an embroidery wall or a stitchery mini quilt kind of wall and knit a blanket to go over the chair in a corner so that I have like a a crafty corner I'm very excited. Uh, what I mean by it's not finished is it's still loose in the back and if you look closely it's still got the marking on the fabric. So what I need to do is soak it in water so that all of the preprint comes off and then put it back in here, trim the edges, go around, pull it tight and then probably put some felt on the back so that it is ready to hang. So like I said, it's not really finished in that I've still got a little bit of work to do on it, but the embroidery is finished and I've moved on to other embroideries, so I'm calling it finished and I will figure that out later. 
after I finished that, I was really sad. I wanted to work on more, but I didn't have any more with me on holiday. And so I had to wait. And so I moved on to a different project, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but as soon as I got home, I went and got another one and started that and finished that. I love it. This one was another one that was on offer for the women. I do have two more that I don't think I have with me. Oh, yes, I do. I'll show you in a minute. I have two more that I bought as well. Um, but yeah, so this was one. Um, I bought a packet. The ones I got for the conference were in packs of five. And I bought an extra packet so that if there was extra people who wanted to come, I would have the opportunity to say, yeah, sure, just sit down. Um, so these ones are from the packet that I bought that matched the ones that the women at conference were doing. And this one was so quick. A lot of people were really nervous at this one, I think particularly because of the French knots over here. Um, and it did hurt my fingers a bit because it was using fixed thread, but like these bits are all six. These bits are all three. Only the baskets themselves were two plies together. Um, so if you don't do embroidery and you've never touched this before, this embroidery thread has six strands twisted together. And so most times you're doing cross stitch or embroidery, you'll have to separate the strands out and use two or three or four, sometimes five or six. Um, but two is the most common in the things that I've done before. This one, a lot of it was six. Like all of these leaves over here were six. These ones were three. So it was three or six for the most part. And it just meant that it went so quickly. And so these leaves here, which are all three, I had similar styles over here. So this is all the same stitch, but with two strands. And I found the three just went so much quicker. So yeah, I wasn't a fan of doing it with six strands. Six strands was too much and I found it hurt my fingers to pull it through. But three strands was really, really nice. And filled out nice and quick and I am loving the French knots. I just I found this part so enjoyable and it reminded me of another project that I have been collecting things for for years and not done yet and so I pulled that out and started working on getting that going. So I might even show you that now. It's not even a project it's just bits and pieces. So I'm not even sure if I, if I should. All right. So this is something that I just bought to go with this other project, which is beads, because this project will use beads. It will use charms. I'm not going to get them out of the packet, but you can see there a whole bunch of different charms in gold or like a bronzy color or silver. I even found some that are Bibles. I'm very, very excited. And so what I'm going to do is get some fabric, draw a heart on it, put some charms on, and then around the charms I've got some other beads coming that'll be like pearl beads. So I'll put the pearl beads on. And then after I've done pearl beads, I'm going to do French knots in silk ribbon and then once I've done all the French knots in silk ribbon I will put these tiny beads into the gaps. This probably makes not much sense right now. I'm very very excited and believe me when I say this will not take much longer to get going and I will show you as I do it because it is going to be gifts. Um, I'm going to make one for Jordan and myself and then I'll make some as gifts for other people. Um, I saw, I don't think I have a photo of it anymore. I saw someone, I think I used, to, I definitely used to work in a patchwork shop. And I think someone brought in one of these that she wanted to get some fabric to go around. Um, but it was stunning that it was just kind of, I think she'd done a Christmas tree with like instruments on it. Um, anyway, it was gorgeous. And so I started planning doing that. 
and finally found the charms and then put them in a box to move to Poland. It took a while to find them. Um, but I've always been like, oh, it's a bit hard. And after doing these embroideries, this is the instructions for the other one. After doing the embroideries, I just was like, man, I want to do more French knots. I have a project for that. So that's an upcoming one, which I will show you when I get there. All right, that is all my finished objects, but we're going to take a break now to talk about socks. Socks. These are socks that I made a while ago, before I had a podcast. Um, I made these when I was living in Australia with um, not just socks, yarn from Spotlight, some motivira yarn. And for the toes and heels, I used um, Malabrigo sock. And it was called Malabrigo sock. And so I went, well, it must be good for socks. It was 100% uh, merino. It was no nylon. But as a newbie socker, sock knitter, I was like, well, it says sock. It's called sock. Surely you can use it for socks. Rookie error. I have made some other socks with 100% superwash merino wool now. And I haven't had this problem yet with them, but this is my oldest pair. And the problem is, when I put the sock on, I got a giant gaping hole. Um, but it's not just, like you can see the fluff. It's almost like it's felted together so the stitch definition is completely gone. Um, like some of the yarn is just really, really worn. Sorry, it's focusing on my face. Really, really worn. Um, yeah, it's just, and it's the bottom of the sock. It's not where it's scraping. It's where I'm standing. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I will, if you want me to try and record what I do and how I fix this, let me know in the comments because if you want, I'm not going to say tutorial because this will be my first mend. Um, but if you want me to kind of record and take you through what I'm doing for if you ever have a similar problem, let me know. Um, I think what I'll probably do, or maybe, I'm like, I may just, um, I may just re-knit the heel turn. Because it seems to be just the heel turn that's a problem. So if I pick up stitches from the heel flap, re-knit the heel turn, and then kitchen it down the bottom, that actually might do it. Obviously not in the same wool. I'm not using this wool for socks again. Um, yeah. So anyway, I thought that, that was really disappointing. It happened on holidays. Yeah, on holidays. Um, funny story. My son loves eating sugar packets, like that you get in a cafe or in a hotel room, they have sugar packets. And every time we went into a hotel room, he'd pick them up and they've so far been the really long, thin things. And he like kind of just chews the end or rips it and then pours it in his mouth. He's four. And I'd seen him doing this at different points. We had one at home for some reason that we'd like picked up with a, take with a takeaway coffee and he just, he would just try and eat it. Now, we don't usually have sugar in our hot drinks, um, which means they're usually sitting there for a long time. We got to the cafe and he picked, not the cafe, the hotel room that we were staying at, and he went and picked up a sachet of coffee and was like, I'm going to eat this. And me and my husband just said, no, that's not sugar. And he was like, yes, it is. And we said, it's not sugar. We're not lying to you. Do not eat that was like yes it is you're like you're lying you're not telling me the truth because you don't want me to eat sugar and we're like it's not sugar anyway he doesn't like the flavor of coffee we know this he's tasted our coffees before iced sweetened everything he does not like it and finally I said to my husband look there are worse things that he can do than eat a mouthful of coffee he's not gonna like it but it's not gonna hurt him and so we said to him okay you can eat it and he kind of stopped and looked at us and was like, oh, maybe it's not sugar. I'm like, no, 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 eat it. You want to eat it? You eat it. And so he ate it. 
and he was like, oh, and he spat it out. And the reason that I'm thinking of this is I've got a little bit here, but I didn't want to wash the socks. This is a bit of the coffee that he spat out. <laughs> but I didn't want to wash the socks until I could fix the hole. Um, anyway, <laughs> he spat it out. He was horrified. And then we said, oh, um, you know, do you believe us now that we're not lying to you? And he just stood there and was like, It was great. It was such a beautiful moment as a parent to be like, my child now knows I'm not lying to him when I tell him not to eat something that is not good for him. <sighs> anyway, it was fun. Um, and he didn't try and eat the coffee again. He was quite happy when we said it was coffee and not sugar. There was sugar there, but it was in a different shaped packet and we weren't showing him. All right. So that is my finished objects. That is my socks that need mending and an upcoming project which really I'm sorry I had not much to show you. Now let's talk about what I've been working on. Now I mentioned before if you watched my travel planning project knitting episode, man those plans went out the window quickly. I, in terms of travel, it was pretty good. The kids, almost two and four, did much better at traveling this time than any other time we've traveled. Even six months ago, we saw a huge difference in terms of how, how they go with traveling, which is good because it gives us hope that we can do more traveling in the future. However, on the way to conference, I did not have a seat. We were on a train, but we didn't have assigned seats. And so I was standing a lot of the way, um, at conference, we did a lot of things, but the <laughs> sessions were more interactive than I was expecting. And so even without kids with me, I didn't get a huge amount of knitting time done. Um, and then the embroidery took over when I did have time. <laughs> so all in all, the amount of mindless knitting I did was much less than I expected. And I had a little sneaky cast on, which I'll show you, which was not part of my plan. I just realized I left one of my projects downstairs. All right. Um, I had a sneaky cast on, which was not part of the plan, but I realized I wanted something. No, I think it was once I had packed everything. I then was like, I have nothing to work on now and I need something mindless to work on now. And so I went and quickly found a skein that I could cast on some vanilla socks. And then I was like, actually, you know what? I do want to take these with me. So I did. And I finished a sock. All right, I'm going to pause. Go get a sock blocker and this other project. Okay, I'm back. Um, so as I was going to pick this up, I realized that I have not been knitting, knitting, knitting many socks lately. And so it was strange to be like, I'm going to just cast on a sock because I haven't been reaching for socks, but I did on holidays. Now this yarn is Hobby Halloween Sockle. It is number six, which on the website says vampires. Now I don't look at this and think vampires. I look at this and think pink and gray. Um, but there you go. Uh, I still have my markers on it because I am still knitting the second sock. I'm quite early on. Actually, I'm not as early on as I thought. That's exciting. Um, one thing about Hobby, I'm not trying to get them to match. It started off the same, which was not intentional. It's just where I finished the toe. But in the middle of this pink it cut and went straight to grey and they do this a lot I've had it before where I've tried to make things match and then I've had that happen and then that's happened on the second sock or something and it's just so frustrating so when I'm using hobby sockle I do not try and make the match if they do match accidentally that's fine I do not try and do it deliberately because it drives me nuts but it also means I usually just do whatever colors for the heel I don't try and do a contrast colour because it's not going to affect, no, sorry, 
it is going to affect the stripes, but I don't care because I'm not trying to make the match. Um, I do like the look of a contrast heel for stripy socks. Um, so maybe I'll do that occasionally even if I'm not trying to make the match. But for these ones, I just wanted it as simple as possible because it was for travelling. And it worked. I got one sock done and I am on the second. I'm doing these on 2.5mm DPN needles. I have a little project progress marker that says sip, stick, sip, knit, sip with a little ball of yarn. I think I got that from Hobby as well. And I am through the heel onto the gusset decreases. And you can see like the heel flap starts halfway through the purple here and on the black here. So it's definitely not matching, but it's similar, which is, I mean, kind of nice. Like I said, I don't really mind. Um, and I have these, I just have a little DPN cozy that I made, oh, that I made myself out of some friends fabric that I bought from Spotlight Australia. And so I just have these in here. It's a cozy. It's not just for DPNs, but that's what I use them for. It just has two little snaps, so you can put the needles in there and snap it shut. That one shut. And it just means the needles can't disappear, the knitting can't come off the needle. It just makes travelling knitting with DPNs that much more simple. And this is in the bag. Ball of yarn, stop other sock is all in this little bag that I made. This bag I have a tutorial for if you're interested in making a bag. Um, go check it out. Just a little sock size project bag but I do put notes. I do talk about in the tutorial how to change the size. So yeah they were the socks that got a lot more work than I was expecting. The one that I had to run and grab because I'd forgotten to bring it because it's been my travel knitting at the moment, is I'm making another magic beanie. This makes me so happy. I don't think I have, no, I don't have the label for this, the yarn. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure is a silk wool mix. It doesn't have nylon, I definitely remember that. Uh, that's why it's becoming a hat and not socks. But I think it's a silk wool mix and it is from Dying Dream, which is an Australian dyer. And I absolutely love how this is knitting up. It's basically one big spiral. Now, let's see if I can do this without losing stitches. Yeah. Oh wow, that's almost ready for decreases. So, this is my hat. And when I say my hat, I use that very loosely because I expect that my two-year-old daughter is going to take it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's very fun. It's a, it's not a pattern that's written. I call it the magic beanie. I've done another hat like this before. And so I just followed the same notes for this, except I did it with, three millimeter needles instead of four millimeter needles and the reason is twofold one when I was doing four millimeter needles the fabric was quite different the first one I did it with was worsted this is DK and it was just looking a little loose not sure it was going to be warm enough for a winter hat so I wanted to downsize and I didn't have any 3.5 millimeters so I went down to a three or two point 3.25 or 3.75. So I went down to a 3 because that's what I had circulars in. Now these circulars are pretty good and I'm definitely making it work. I've almost finished that um, but I think I would prefer having them slightly bigger for doing ribbing for this long because it's all knit to pearl to with decreases and um, knitting in the rim and things like that. Um, but basically pattern is knit to pearl to rib. Um, so yeah, I think if I had, these are 16 inch, I think if I had like 20 inch needles, it would have been more comfortable doing the pearling that much. As it is, I did it and super, super, super convenient travel knitting in that 
and you can just drop it at any point, which sometimes traveling with kids you need to do. Not super convenient because with the small circumference and knit two pearl two, I had to look a lot more than I like to. If it was doing it magic loop, I wouldn't have had to have looked, but knit two pearl two I did, and therefore with travel knitting, I got a little bit train sick, motion sick. Not much, I don't get it very often, and so I just put it down and had a nap at one point, and it was fun. But definitely for looking after kids, I found this a very simple project. Um, and I call it the magic hat because it fits everyone. Like I just put it on, it fit me, but I'm pretty sure it'll fit my daughter right now as well. And so I might see if I have a beanie and I can just add a beanie. Actually, no, she needs hats that don't have bobbles so she can wear her hoods over them if she needs to. So anyway, this will probably become for her. It's not really my color, but it's so much fun. All right. So that was my other travel knit. That one was planned as a travel knit. I still didn't finish it. The next project I'm going to show you, which was planned as a travel knit, I didn't, I did take on conference, but I didn't take to holiday. And I will show you. This is the pink fuzz sweater, but sorry, pink fizz, pink fizz by Andrea Mowry of Dre Renee Knits. And, oh, I haven't showed you this yet. I made myself a new bag. I wanted a bag for this sweater. And so I made myself a new project bag. Just look at those beautiful little girls, animals, bikes. And then because I've spoken about this before, I'm starting to notice I want a notions pouch in my bigger bags. So I made a tiny little notion pouch, which if you're interested, also follows the same tutorial as this. The only difference is dimensions and I didn't box the corners. So if you want a pouch and you don't know how to do zips or anything like that, just follow the tutorial for this and don't box the corners. But obviously, it's smaller. Change the dimensions. Um, yeah. So for this, I am using hand dyed wool. I dyed this myself. I love this color. And then I found some mohair. Hang on. Super kid mohair. So it's nylon, merino, and super kid mohair. This is gazelle. And I just thought those two together are going to look gorgeous. Now I've never used super kid gazelle. I've never used a mohair, mohair merino before. I've only used a mohair silk before. And I think this is where I came up against it. This is my gauge swatch. I'm trying to do bigger ones so I get a better, more accurate view. And you can see, like, that fabric is quite good. It's not super holy. This is lace, so you expect holes. But it, like, it looks lovely. I like it. So it'll, pattern-wise, be something like that in terms of where it sits. It's a drop shoulder. Yeah, a drop shoulder bottom up pattern I believe um yeah so I like it but there were two things one I did not hit gauge which means I'm gonna have to sit down and do the math I like this fabric I don't think I need to change my needle size but that means I need to do the math to figure out what size sweater I need to knit but I think because it's mohair and not silk it didn't have the same drape either that I was expecting from this fabric um because it is a drop shoulder, but it's meant to be all very like feminine and flowy. And when I first picked this up, I was just unimpressed with the flow. Um, showing you now, I don't mind it as much. Like it's still got a bit of a flow. Obviously when it's longer, it'll be more drapey. Um, yeah. Part of me even wonders if I need to go up a needle size, but I do want it to be a cozy sweater not a, 
Like, I want it to be warm. I don't want it to be too thin, a fabric. And, yeah, I think this will be okay. I think it will. But because, I mean, if you're a knitter, you've probably experienced this. When you have a plan and it doesn't quite look what you want to do, sometimes it's better just put it in time out. Not because you're not coming back to it, not because you don't love it, but because you know if you push through right now, you will make decisions you're not happy with. And it's just not going to be enjoyable. And I think that's where this was. I finished the, the swatch. I wasn't 100% happy with it. I knew there'd be more work. And so I put it in just in case I wanted to work on it in, com in holidays. And then by the time I got to holidays, I was like, I just, I don't want to. I just want a bit of space. So I put it back home and now I'm looking at this going, yeah, when I'm ready, I will cast this on. That's not right now. I have a few other projects that I'm working on instead. But I wanted to show you that because even though I haven't cast it on yet, it's not technically a work in progress, a whip. It is something that I've spoken to you about and I want you to be able to keep up to date with what's going on and why I'm not working on things that I tell you that I'm going to. Also helpful. All right, the next one that I told you that I would start and I did is, not that one, this one. Sorry, I have all around me, all around me I have projects. This one is this Shoe Swee Shrug by So Soo Knits. Now, I've never done a So Soo Knit pattern before. I'm pretty sure I can show you this. She has charts so that you know for however many repeats you're doing and whatever size you're doing, how many stitches you should have and not just how many stitches for the whole row, but how many stitches for each section in the row. So it's like 6 plus 2 plus 2 plus this plus this plus this plus this equals this. And so you have the total stitches, you have the sections, so if you've made a mistake, you know which section the mistake is in. Brilliant. Do I use it? No. I'm pretty confident with my, st with my stuff that if there is a mistake, I tend to notice on the second row back that I'm like, this doesn't look right. But for people who are nervous about picking up too many rows or having too many stitches, I can recommend. This is brilliant. And I have another one of her patterns that I've started, and I did use it for that one. Um, so this is the Shoe Sweet Shrug by Susu Knits. It is an oversized brioche cardigan. And I am using... This is 4-ply organic merino in the Robin's Egg colorway. It's getting slightly blown out there. That's better. Um, by, it's still a little bit, a little bit greener than on the screen. Um, this is by Daffodil Road Yarn. And I am hold, and I, my color two is this one, which I dyed. And then I have this one, which is by 3 Tree Fiber Craft, because I didn't have enough of this to do the whole thing. And so it's like, I'll hold them together. Now, they... Hmm, I did do a separate photo, a video. I'm not sure I'm going to put it in here. But they are different. And I didn't realize how different they were inside. But when I got outside, I was knitting on this on a balcony with bright sun. I realized that these colors are actually decently different. And the main difference is this kind of brownie color is basically absent from here there's a tiny bit but not really and overall this is a much darker bluey color yeah which isn't a problem i'm happy to do some kind of fade but do i have it here like i said i just have bags and things everywhere. I don't think I do. I think it's downstairs. Um, or did I just put it? Anyway, the other colour that will be my colour too for this shawl is another hand dyed, but it has much less of the purple colours and more of that kind of burnt colour. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one by itself and then I'm going to alternate this one with the second skein um, until these run out. I have two of these and then I will knit with 
the second colour. So they will kind of be a bit of a fade through, but yeah. Because yeah, this is, like, it's much more pink, it's, like, you can kind of see the area difference. Yeah, it's different enough that I think I would notice it. And so it'll still be different striping this to the other one, but anyway. That's how I'm going to try and blend colour 2, because colour 2 is just going to be a mix of a whole lot of things. Um, but this is what I have done so far. Let me get it untangled and spread out. I love it. This is like I said, it's a cardigan, so it will sit, like on the back, it'll sit something like that. So I think these parts here is what comes over to the front. Oh no, this, this is the shoulder here. So it'll be like that, and that's the back coming down. Um, so on the shoulder, you'll see that. Um, that's, that's gorgeous. In the pattern, she says use the lighter colour as colour A and the darker colour as colour B, which I was planning to do anyway in the video, in the pattern. Um, I was planning to do that anyway because I had more of colour A of the light blue than the other and colour A uses slightly more. But, maybe I do. When I started knitting it, I decided I really like this side better. And so I was toying with the idea of making, like doing it as pattern, but then planning to wear it inside out. And so making sure that when I cast, cast in. So in all the ends, this is the side that is facing out. Which I also really like that. But now that I'm trying it on, trying it on, like maybe I do want the light colour. That is stunning. All right. I think what I'm going to have to do is make sure that when I'm sewing in the ends, I'm sewing them in so that I can wear it reversible. Either way. Um, yeah. So I'm absolutely loving it. It is the kind of pattern that when I first picked it up, I was like, oh, this is going to be a bit complicated. I definitely need a focus. And so I, I had it in my holiday, like when the kids were asleep or whatever, and I just had a chance to pull it out. And it was that kind of quiet, very focused knitting. And then I got to maybe, so you start here, I got to maybe here and I was like, ah, oh, I've got this memorized. I can do this. I, I think in terms of patterns, so knitting patterns, as soon as it's a repeat, um, it's a four row repeat, but brioche. So it's kind of effectively eight rows of knitting each time for one repeat. Um, but there were patterns, like every right side row you do this, every wrong side row you do this, every colour B you do this, every colour A you do this. Um, and so I figured that out pretty quickly and stopped having to look at the pattern. So that was nice. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. It did take a back seat to some other knitting in a little bit. But there you go. Um, the organic four ply wool from Daffodil, Daffodil Road Yarn is not super wash, so I will have to take good care of this one. Um, yeah, I'm using four millimeter needles, which is the recommended needle size. I, yeah, I'm not sure there's much more to say on this one. It's definitely at this point something that I can just kind of pick up and work on. It's not something that I think I will do a huge amount on in the coming days because I have just been distracted by so many other things and that's okay because this isn't work this is not something I get paid to do I don't have commission projects this is all just for fun for me even the podcast talking to you guys I don't have sponsors this is all just fun for me um so if I get distracted and move on to a different project or do a whole lot of embroidery, that's okay. Um, so that was the shoe sweet shrug. The thing that I moved on to 
on holidays when I'd finished my embroidery and I was ready for something else. It was like a bit of a, I can just sit and knit and not think too much. You're going to laugh when I show you this. It was my three season cardigan. Now the reason you'll probably laugh is it, it's lace work, it's um, cable work, it's not piecing but there was some seaming, there was a collar band, like it wasn't simple, it wasn't I'm just going to do stocking stitch, but I only had one colour and therefore in my mind it was simple. I still have two walls because I'm still alternating skeins but it was only one colour. We're British, I have two colours and so it just seemed, I guess with British it is like another step again. So compared to my British shoe sweet shrug, this was simple. And so I got a lot done. Um, I don't even have the marker in for where it was when I showed you last because I blocked it and I needed to take it out to block. But have a look at this. The back is done, completely done. Um, it was done last time I showed you but like it's even got the collar at the top now. I'm going to turn it around. The front is completely done, including the button band. I haven't put buttons on yet, but it is completely done. Let me take my cardigan off. Let's see if I can slide this on. Don't do that. It is still on the needles. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. So, this is my three season cardigan. I love it. 100%. I've done it. Sorry, this is going to be a little, little bit awkward. I'm sitting on the floor. It is cropped. So my waist is here, my jeans are sitting here at the moment. So it's sitting a little bit below the top of my jeans. Um, I, which way is it going to go this way? I have a feeling I put the button bands in the wrong, the button holes in the wrong side. I keep doing it that way and that's not the way that I put the button holes. Oh well. Um, it is a cropped cardigan. I think it's a bit longer than the pattern said, but I wanted it cropped because I want to be able to wear it with dresses. Now that I'm putting it on, it's been blocked, it's rested a bit, I'm like that is plenty long enough. When I first tried it on, it seemed really short and that's why I blocked it before I seamed it because when you're seaming, you really want to make sure that it's as long as it's going to be. So this one you just seam under the sleeves. Um, if it's not blocked when you seam it, when you block it, especially for superwash, which this is, and it grows, the seam doesn't grow because the seam is, like it's limited, it's not knit, it's a single line of thread. And so I really wanted to make sure that I blocked it before I seamed it. Um, but yeah, so this was my go to basic knitting. I I'm, I think I'd started the second sleeve before I went to holiday. I'm not sure if I'd shown you since I had, but I pretty sure before holiday I'd started the second sleeve. And so it was just a matter of following the pattern, getting to the bottom, knitting this. And then I did the button band before I blocked it. So I picked up the button band, did all of that. Then I blocked it and seamed it down the sides and picked up for the sleeve. Now I haven't done much since then. The reason being the sleeve, which is the same lace as this, but no, actually it's not. A little bit of the sleeve is the same lace as this. Some of the sleeve is a cable pattern. So I picked up for it, but the rest of this has been knit in the flat. This is the sleeves in the, in the round. Um, I'm not loving doing magic loop with them. So that's one reason that 
I didn't do as much as I probably would have otherwise. And I haven't figured out if I'm going to buy new needles or if I'm going to get over it. A longer... I think it's that, like, the cord isn't quite long enough to make it simple magic loop. Anyway, I'll figure that out. But because it's knit in the round, when you're doing cable work flat, you knit the pattern one way, and then the other way you just kind of do whatever the knitting is. So if you're looking at a purl stitch, you purl. If you're looking at a knit stitch, you knit. When you're doing it in the round, you do... It's kind of the same. You do one row of pattern, and then you do run one row of just straight knitting. But because I'm used to turning and going back, and so you often have more purls than knits, where this one you have all knits, I just was forgetting that I wasn't going back. And so every time I got to the beginning of round, I would do the next pattern line. I would not do the plain line in between, which meant that for lace work and for cables, it was just the whole thing was scrunched up and you weren't getting the kind of pattern or the ease. And Anyway, it was my own fault. I just wasn't reading the pattern properly. The pattern told me I was just forgetting. And so I had to rip out, re-pick up the sleeve. Actually, no, I didn't. I picked up the stitches back before the patterning started. And then I ripped it out. And I've started again with the patterning. But after all of that, I was like, I think this one needs a break now. Um, although putting it on now, I'm like, oh, I want to wear this. This is beautiful. It is called the Three Season Cardigan. And we're currently in spring. So I should be able to wear it, and I will be able to wear it when it's finished. I want to finish it. So anyway, I'm loving, I love it, I love the design, I love the, the lace, the cables. It has been a pure joy to knit this one. It is by um, Wool and Pine Designs, is the designer, and I am using Malabrigo Rios in Bobby Blue colorway. It's a worsted yarn, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I did pick up a little Notions pouch, a holiday um, was to Greece, and I got to ride a donkey. So I found a little pouch with a donkey on it. It's very exciting. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm very excited to get working on this again. I'm looking around at my other projects being like, mm, will it, will it, will it quickly become... Um, I was working on this in my 30 minutes of knitting, and that's how I made so much progress on the back and did the front side. Um, on holidays, it was that if I don't have brain power for something else, I'll go pick that one up. And I've since moved something different into my 30 minutes of knitting. So we'll see how... Or my 30, 30 minutes of crafting in the morning. We'll see if this gets back to that or not. But it is very exciting, and having tried it on... I think I will start reaching for it again because I want it. And now I need to put my cardigan back on because it is a little bit cold in here. Do, 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 do. There we go. Alright, so that was my three season cardigan. The next one, so when when this one hit the naughty corner, no, when this one was being blocked, I then needed something different. Because I had my shoe sweet shrug. But that was a more complicated one. This one had been my, I'm just going to sit and work on it without thinking. And then this one was being blocked and I needed another one. <laughs> and so then I was like, let's cast on my next sweater. And so I was in the middle of the... Look at that. I was in the middle of the swatch when I went and so I finished doing the swatch and blocked that um, and then measured it and it's pretty good for gauge it's slightly I think this was slightly smaller and this was slightly bigger um, but I was like that'll be fine and I did a little bit of jigging with numbers to make sure that it would be fine and then I realized that the pattern is completely knit flat, which is fine, and then seamed, but because it's a drop shoulder bottom up, I was like, I can knit the whole body in the round, 
and then split for the sleeves and go from there. And so I'm doing that instead. Um, when you change patterns, yeah. So this is the Breedly Cobb Stitch Jumper. Let me find... I don't know if I have a full picture of this one. Um, oh, there we go. The Breedly Cobb Stitch Jumper uh, by Sarah Hatton. When I made the change to knitting it in the round, which I'm not a huge, I'm not hugely worried about how loose my gauge will be. I'm possibly looser knitting, doing knit stitch than doing curl stitch. And so it may slightly loosen my gauge, but it's not going to be enough that it's going to worry me. However, I knew that the edge stitches To put it when you're joining your seaming you lose a stitch on the end so I was like if I take out a stitch from the end and then I take I just have less stocking in the center to account for my different gauge then that should be fine but what I didn't realize is because this pattern here fits perfectly into a knit two pearl two rib or a knit one pearl one rib so that these I'm not sure if you can be able to see this so that these ridges come out of the pearl one. Oh, sorry, the knit one. Um, but then I had left an even number of stitches between the patterns, which meant that the next one, all of those bits were coming out of the pearls and all the pearls were coming out of the knits. And I was like, oh, but I didn't realize this until I'd finished the ribbing. And then I was like, what do I do? And I tried to jig a few things and I was like, I think I just need to start again. And so I ripped it all out and I started again and I changed my numbers. So I'm doing I'm doing a size three. Yes. This is fun, isn't it? I'm doing a size three, uh, which is cast on 137 stitches. I cast on 264 stitches to do it in the round. So I'd effectively taken off one stitch on each end, um, and taken away five stitches for each, like for the front and for the back, in the center. So in the center I have 51 stitches, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I've done. I just have like, I just have scribbles on my pattern. Um, it is a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to show you the pattern more than that tiny little flush that I just did before I realized it was a paid for pattern. Um, anyway, I just have scribbles all over it as I've tried to make sure that I know what I've done. Um, but the upshot of all of this is that I finished the gauge swatch on holiday and I have done this. I'm, I'm not even certain I've finished casting it on. I'm going to have to count. In fact, I don't think I have finished casting it on. How funny is that? I thought I had done a couple of rounds of the ribbing again. Nope. So this is a whip. <laughs> I have some amount of stitches cast on. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, so not much to show you, but I am... If you watched my planning video, you know that I was toying between whether I did this in this colour or in a brown... I'm so happy with this colour, I'm so happy to work to wear it, and the brown that I was planning for this one, I've put away for an autumn knit, and I look forward to casting that one on in autumn. So there you go, that was much less to show you than I expected, but gauge swatch is done, amounts are done, now I just need to go back and actually start it. Um, I think at this point I'll probably pause that until I finish the three season cardigan. All these bags I've made. Yeah. I, I am a sewer. I have lots of fabric. This is Anne of Green Gables, as you can see behind me. And so I just 
make them and sometimes I use interfacing sometimes I use leftover batting from quilts and that's done all right so that is it for knitting but not it for fiber and not it for um yeah I have more whips I do have one more crochet I have one crochet one to show you as well but I will show you this one first so like I said, on holidays, I got into embroidery and I was really, really loving it. And I was really sad when I finished it and I came home and I started, I was about to say cast on, I started the next one straight away. And I finished like this one. It was so quick and I was still on holidays. We've had public holidays here in Poland for the last few days as well. And it was just, we have heaps of time. Um, and so I did this relatively quickly as well, a couple of days, and I was like, what else do I have? And then I realized I have a cross stitch. Now, uh, this is in the frame, and I'm not going to take it out because I'm in the middle of it, but this is a cross stitch that I bought in 2010. 2010. I bought this cross stitch. I started it in 2010. I was trying to get it finished before I'm, no, sorry, 2008. Oh, that's even longer. I started in 2008. I was trying to get it finished by 2010 to give it to someone and did not. And then in 2012, I was going to see that person again. So then I had like another little burst to finish it and I didn't. And so it's been mostly finished since 2012. But the bit that wasn't done was the back stitching, the outlining, the couching, um, all the like finishing touches and because they were the bits that I was least comfortable with because I like cross stitches because you know exactly what you need to do and it's just in out in out in out yeah so I just kind of didn't touch it and I didn't touch it and I didn't touch it and it was so close to finishing that I was like I need to finish it but it was in the too hard basket hands up if you got one of them it was in the too hard basket and then when I was doing the embroidery and I was like, this is so much fun. I was like, the last bit of cross stitch is basically an embroidery. It's the back stitch. It's the, the thread painting with thread, if you can call it that. And so I pulled it out and I realized I'd actually done a lot of it. Most of the back stitch had been done. It was just the couching and couching is when you have thread on the top and then you kind of come in and out and just kind of loop over with the other thread, like a single piece of thread, so that that thread that's lying on top of the fabric stays in place. That's pretty much all I had to do. So, I pulled it out. This is what it looks like. This is, I love the bigger ones. I love the dedicated ones. This one just reminded me of me as an 18 year old. Like I said, I'm not taking the hoop out because at the moment I'm working on this couching here. So you can see this one here is finished. This bit here is finished and I'm just working on this down here, a little bit down here and then it will be down here as well. So I'm, I'm actually really close to finished completely. Yeah. I love it. I don't think I'm going to give it away. <laughs> I think that ship has sailed. Um, the person that I was trying to finish it to give to in 2012, I haven't seen since 2012. Um, we still message occasionally and catch up, but yeah. I just, I love it. But I did buy a second one. It's up there somewhere. Um, I did buy a second one of these, which is an autumn theme with a similar kind of person on it. And so I think I'll finish this and I will frame it and I'll start the autumn one and in another, what, 15 years I'll finish that. Um, yeah, so I'm just really loving working on this. The pattern, I bought it, I bought it from Michaels in America. I do remember that. Um, the pattern is huge. And it does have instructions um, there you go, it's the Gold Collection, the Gold Collection, Woodland Enchantress, kit number 
so if you're interested it was 15 years ago I don't know if they still have it fair warning um, so that has been something that I've been working on I find natural light easier to do it um, but I've been working on it sometimes in the morning while I listen to the Bible sometimes outside sitting on a chair um, yeah it's been nice and I'm like I'm close if I keep working on it it'll be done by the time I talk to you again without a doubt which I haven't spoken about I'm planning to do this every couple of weeks again every two weeks again I'm not sure how that's gonna work our schedule is crazy and up in the air um, we're just kind of easing back into things at the moment so it's working okay but yeah trying to figure out a whole lot of stuff all right my final my final project is a scrappy project this one is not stored in something that I made this is stored in an Ikea basket I can't tell you what it's called but I can tell you I got it from Ikea and I I really like the style of them they're not big enough for a lot of my things but I do have I think I have three of them like even this one you can see it's overflowing um, but I have one of them with like paper pieces for sewing in and I have another one with something in it I'm not sure what all right so this one is a scrappy basket scrappy yarn basket I am following the pattern on the My Poppet Makes website. It is linked below, the Ravelry pattern for it is linked below. And I don't know if you can buy the pattern on Ravelry or if the Ravelry page for it takes you straight to the website where it's a tutorial. But I'm using the website tutorial, so everything you need to know is on that. I am using a an 8mm hook at the moment. I started with a 9mm hook and it broke. Like the the hook part snapped off. And I didn't have another 9mm so I went down to an 8 because that's what I had. And I'm actually finding it much more comfortable crochet. I think it's like I think the size is slightly different and so it might end up with a little bit uneven but it'll just be the last couple of rounds of the base. And then I'm going to start the sides. And so if the sides are slightly different to the base, I don't mind. Um, so this is what I have so far. It is a hexagon because when you do circular crochet, generally you do it as a hexagon. Don't know if you knew that. I love it. I love, love, love scrappy projects. I love, love, love marling and marling lots of different things because you get so much fun. And I don't know if you can see it there, but it's got some glitter in it too. So basically what I did, as I've been pulling yarn for projects the last few times, I keep coming up against yarn that I don't like. Like even the blanket that I finished today, this is left over from that. This is left over from that. Um, but... I, I keep it because I've bought it or it's been gifted to me and I don't like getting rid of yarn. It's like this is a cotton that was gifted to me. Um, this is a, a non-wool sock yarn that was gifted to me but I am actually going to make socks with some of this. I was gifted three balls of it. Two balls matched and one ball was an odd ball so I am using the odd ball in here. This is one that I made a sweater out of that I'm not a big fan of. Like, it's just yarn. This one, I bought these. They were $2 on sale from Spotlight, down from 7 And they're, they're not fingering. They're not lace. They're kind of between fingering and lace. Probably more lace. I don't know. They're thin. They're cotton and acrylic, I believe. They're sparkly. I've done it before where I've held this with a fingering weight to make socks like DK socks and that worked nicely but I don't know I don't want to make that many DK socks because I have three of them and they're they're big and so I was like if I mull it and put it all together then I can make a blanket uh, a basket and that's what I'm doing and my my dream for this basket is I'll go a little bit bigger 
it's to be just a big basket that I can chuck all my scraps in and go from there. And so this has kind of been my my template is like that's now bigger than this basket because I want it to be bigger than this basket. But I'm like, mm, a little bit bigger so that I can really get a good amount of scraps in here and have scrappy blankets. Like I want it to be big enough that I can have all the scraps, pick it up, knit, chuck the blanket in and just have it be big enough. And it has handles so that I'll be able to pick it up and carry it around as well. <sighs> scrappy crochet basket for scrappy blankets. Now, what I have in here is not going to be enough to do a whole basket. But I then have this yarn, which is like a chenille soft, fluffy thing that was given to me. And so my plan is, I think, I'm not sure how different the gauge will be, um, but my plan is when I run out of my acrylic yarn and I only have these three thin ones left, I will swap over to holding those three with this. And so I'll have like a very kind of mild scrappy bottom and then the top will be more white with a little bit of mowing. And I'm hoping that that'll kind of colour block it out and make it seem deliberate that I have this different yarn that I can only hold with the thin ones because it's already so thick. I can't really hold it with the acrylics. Uh, sorry, with the DKs and worsteds. Um... So yeah, I'm hoping that that'll make it seem deliberate, still allow me to use this very thick yarn and end up with a nice colour blocked yarn basket. The, the pattern says, so you can see here, I'm holding a lot of different yarn together. So I have seven strands of yarn here. I have the three like lace to fingering weight ones. I have one fingering. I have two DK and I have one worsted, all being held together. Um, I also have an Aran, so when the next DK runs out, that'll probably switch to an Aran, so it'll get a bit thicker again. And like I said, I'll move to these three thin ones here. These are the ones that I will then hold with the white when I get to that. So I look forward to showing you this. Knowing me and crochet and this kind of project, it should be finished next time I see you. Unless I hit a road bump and I start this and I'm like, wow, this is ugly. And then I have to find some other yarn. Barring that, it should be done next time I see you. Um, it is, yeah, it's really fun. And the, the hook I'm using, I said the other one broke. This is a Tulip Atimo 8mm. And it is so comfy. The other one I was using, I I couldn't tell you the brand or anything about it. It was plastic. That's about all I can tell you. And by it was plastic, I mean it was... Have I just lost my thread there? Oh, there we go. Okay. I was like, I'm, I'm missing my most bright colored thread, brightly colored thread. Um, the other yarn... The other crochet hook I was using, I'm pretty sure I bought it to do this with um, because that's the only reason I would have a 9mm hook and I've had this on my to-do list for a long time. Um, but I couldn't tell you where I bought it from or anything. It was just like a, a translucent kind of see-through-ish green plastic and it broke. This one seems much more sturdy. It could still break but it's not having the same friction as I'm using it. So I'm really glad to use a hook that I wasn't really loving and then swap to this one because Tula Patimos are on the pricey end, but definitely for these two, I can see why. And I'm glad that I have the eight millimeter Tula Patimo. All right. So new things that I have to show you. That's all my whips. That's all of my finished objects. But I do have a couple of new things. Not in there. Um, so I mentioned embroidery. I have two more embroidery kits that I have not started. So I've got this one. I'm not going to take it out of the packaging, so sorry about glare. Um, so that is on a green fabric. Like an olive green, it's not as dark as it is in the picture. 
And then I have this one. So that's half of it. And then that's the other half. So I'm very excited to do these. I'm not... I'm not going to start them straight away. I think I will finish my cross stitch. I will start the other heart ones that I mentioned at the beginning. And then I have another couple that I've also bought patterns for a while ago. I have this thing where I'm like, I really like cross stitch. And so I buy things for cross stitch and then I don't do them because I don't actually do cross stitch much and knitting has taken over my life. But I like it. And so I was like, if I like cross stitch and I want to do it, um, I pulled out the patterns and I pulled out all of my embroidery thread and I'm going to do some colour matching and make some... I don't even know what the word is right now. Thread sorters so that I know which colours I need and basically make up my own kits, if you will, with the pattern that I've bought um, so that I can start them as well. Yeah, pretty fun. Um, so that's some things that I've gotten. I have gotten, well, no, I haven't gotten. I dyed some yarn. So I will show you this. This is my Zakapane colorway. So this is the colorway I dyed to reflect the mountains and the snow and the sky in Zakapane. Now I did see a couple, um, the mountain, the trees in Zakapane are much darker than this. There were a couple of times that I saw like a grassy area with clouds and sky that had these colorways. It wasn't quite right because I was going from memory, not a photo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was going from memory, not a photo. Then I went to Greece and I saw this colorway, like a couple of scenes where this would have matched quite perfectly. Um, so I'm kind of in my mind, this is just going to be my holiday yarn. I don't know. I've got three of these. I don't know if I will make like a sweater or something out of them I might cake one up and do a little gauge swatch to see kind of what you get out of it um yeah I don't know because three is enough to do a sweater but it would be a a stripy spirally sweater maybe so I've got that I have these two which I call aurora borealis so night skies you've got like a little bit of pop of pink and yellow and green but just very tealy sky colors and I love them I don't know what I'm gonna do. oh actually um the crazy sock lady did a pattern called with grace in your heart which is a shawl and you need two skeins of fingering and so I was like maybe I'll make myself a shawl out of this um because this is totally my color and it's gorgeous and it would just be beautiful so that's my like tentative plan for this. I'm not a hundred percent on that yet, but we'll see. This one, this is the one, um, last episode I showed you the minis that kind of match these. This is the one I did not have a mini to match, but I love it. This one I called confetti, I think. Funfetti. Um, oh, it was so much fun. It was the... The mop skein that I then did some speckling and things on top of. I just, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but it's so much fun. I am planning to do, I'm planning to do a lot of things, guys. I love scrappy blankets. I do not have enough scraps. This is what I'm deciding because when I get scraps, I make crochet blankets, I make crochet baskets, I make scrappy blankets, scrappy socks. Like, I just, my scraps just get used all the time. And I don't have enough scraps because I spend so much time making scrappy things that I don't have, like, I don't produce them quickly enough. Like, if any of you have scraps that you just don't want to use and it stresses you out, hit me up, let me know in the comments, and send them to me. I will adopt scraps. 100% I will adopt scraps. Because I love scrappy projects. I just, I don't produce scraps quickly enough. So what I'm considering doing is I have a whole bunch of sock yarn up here, I have a whole bunch of fingering weight yarn up here, I have a whole bunch of less so, but I have quite a bit of DK weight yarn. Um, I'm considering 
for my fingering weight yarn, particularly some of my sock things, just caking them up and pretending they're scraps. Now, I've never understood when people did this before, because I'm like, you've just paid for a perfectly good ball of yarn, why are you just using it in scrappy projects? But I actually just love scrappy projects. And so I am quite happy to have spent this money on a ball of yarn and use it only in scrappy projects. Like I'm at that point because I just want more scraps. Um, I just won a pattern from Knit All The Yarn podcast. Um, Lisa of Knit All The Yarn podcast, she had done her 200th episode and I won a pattern. Thanks, Lisa. Um, and so I asked for the anthology through, which is not one that I've really wanted to make before. But it uses 20 gram minis and I think it would look gorgeous sitting on, we have a really ugly chair in the corner that I'm going to try and make into a stitching corner. And so I was like, it would look really pretty as a throw on the back of the chair that I could then use to snuggle up under as well. Um, cause it's also a cold corner, but it would look pretty when I'm not sitting there. It would be warm when I am. So I was like, that would be a nice one to do. And so I asked for that as my patent prize and she gave it to me. Thank you, Lisa. But I was like, I just don't have scraps to do that. And I don't want to do a rainbow gradient one. I want it to be just random colors. And so I was like, maybe I'll just cake up yarn from my stash and I'll just start knitting. And when the pattern says to change, I'll change. And then I'll have a whole bunch of 80 gram skeins instead of 100 gram skeins. And then I can do five... Like I can do my blanket, uh, my, what blanket's it called? Coziest Memories blanket. Or I can put it into another scrappy project, another blanket. Um, so I don't think I'm going to get a skein and like break it up into five 20 gram minis. But I think I'm just like, if I have a project that I know uses about that, then I can start doing that and then it can just go into my scraps. And then I won't feel the same kind of pressure when it's like, oh, can I use this? Because I totally can. It's a scrap, right? Anyway, I don't. Do you guys have stigma around scraps versus not scraps? Because if something's a scrap, uh, sometimes I'm like, I can totally use this, and other times I'm like, no, I need to keep that because it's a scrap, and I need the perfect scrappy project. <sighs> I like scraps. What can I say? So anyway, if you have scraps that are stressing you out and you want to send them out for adoption, please let me know. I would love to adopt them. Otherwise, I will probably just do that, go through my skeins, find the ones that I'm not really loving, and start using them for scrappy projects. But also, if you're using them in a blanket, you're going to see a fair amount of them. It's like these two. Oh, I didn't even finish showing you this. Sorry. All of this was because this one, I was like, that would be a really fun section in my anthology through. And I'm totally up for doing that. I could do stops and then put it in the anthology throw, or I could do it in the anthology throw, and then put it in socks. These are two more that I dyed, and they've got like a little bit of blue and yellow speckling, but it's a much more muted thing. And so what I'm thinking is, which one? I don't know. I've done this fade set, which is the other one. And there's something that I'm thinking of doing, but I need four colours. And so I was like, maybe if I get that one, or maybe it was this one, then that can be my fourth colour and I can do a fade of those four for this other project that I had in mind, which will not be for me to wear because these are not my colours. That would be pretty. So I'm considering that with those ones. Um... And then this would be an odd skein out, which can totally start a scrappy, scrappy skein blanket thing. Yeah. I love scraps. Um, I did not. Technically, I've earned, been given another Happy Maker ball of yarn, but I haven't actually received it yet. I was told that I would get one. I just haven't gotten it. Being told I would get it was also quite effective. Um, if you're new here, my husband um, has happy makers. I definitely uh, receive love through gifts. I love gifts and it means a lot when I get gifts. So one of the things that we did during lockdown in COVID, 
um, was when I was just having a really bad day, my husband would pull out a fat quarter. So something... This is a half meter, but something like this, pretty fabric, and say, look, have a gift. And it was so effective. This is an Anne of Green Gables print. I, oh, I just realized I haven't ordered it yet. My parents are coming soon. There's a, a place in Australia that has Anne of Green Gable fabric and my parents are coming to visit in two months and I haven't ordered it to send to them so that they can bring it to me. Must do that soon. We're in May. No, that's when I start till June. I was like, they, they often have an end of financial year sale, but that will be in June and my parents arrive in July. So I'm not sure that's going to be enough time. Anyway, that is my beautiful Anne Green Gable fabric. And the point of this being, fabric makes me happy. Yarn makes me happy. And so my husband would give me fabric in lockdown because I was doing much more sewing and not as much knitting. And that would be something to make my day brighter. And it worked every time. And so now he has a pack of yarn in the house somewhere that if I need encouragement, he will give me a ball of yarn. Now, we're talking 50 gram balls that maybe cost five bucks. We're not talking expensive, expensive things. And it's not a very common thing, but it's enough that it just puts a smile on my face. So one of the things I've been trying to do, slight digression here, is be more active. And I really, really, really didn't want to do my exercises. I do an exercise program. It's 30 minutes. Um, and I really enjoy doing it. But starting is hard. And this was going to be the first day that I started. And I could think of all the reasons not to start. And he said, I'll give you a happy maker if you do it. And I was like, okay. And I went and did it. So I've earned it, but I haven't received it yet. So I can't show you that. Um, so keep an eye out next time for that. And honestly, if you're trying to start something, finding something that will motivate you, such as a ball of yarn, is actually not a terrible way to go. Um, yeah. My husband's reading a whole lot of books about motivation and things like that. And one of the big things is just starting. And whatever you need to motivate yourself to get going and start building that habit the first, the second, the third, the fourth time, you do it. Because once you've built the habit, you'll keep going. And even though it seems like a lot of cost or a lot of something to motivate you at the beginning, in the long run, it'll be worth it. Anyway, so that was really helpful for him to do that. The last thing that I have received which is not technically yarn related, but will be used for yarny things. I guess if you get a project back, we call it yarn, a yarny acquisition. I bought some baskets. Now, I don't know if there's a good way to show you these. I live in Poland where there's a lot of really beautiful baskets, people who make really beautiful baskets, really beautiful basket makers as well, I'm sure. And I love baskets. And I currently am surrounded by baskets because I bought some and I haven't figured out what I'm using them for or where to put them yet. So I bought baskets. Uh, my plan, these ones don't work brilliantly for yarn because it is a wicker basket and the yarn does get caught on little bits and pieces that are inside. So it's not brilliant for yarn, um, but oh, that's where my other I've bought two previously, um, so I now have six decently sized baskets. Um, but they are great for putting like lots of project bags in, like I could put embroideries in here while I'm waiting to do things with them. I actually really like just having one downstairs so that if there's stuff that I need to take upstairs but I'm not going to carry it upstairs right now, I can put it in the basket and then when I do go upstairs I take the whole basket up, put away everything. And then when I'm coming downstairs again, I can just carry the basket back down with anything that needs to go downstairs in it. Um, anyway, but I am considering whether or not I make some kind of lining for baskets so that I can use them as project baskets. So there's that one. There's this one, which has a lid. Um, if you don't like baskets, you're going to think that this is really strange, but I love them. Did I realise how much before I moved to Poland? No, I did not. Um, I'm seriously considering buying a book about how to make them. And if they ever see uh, like a local thing where someone's teaching how to make baskets, I'm there. 
Um, so this one, I was like, it's kind of like a mini basket. I'm seriously considering gifting this one to my daughter, particularly for toys, because she loves baskets. I did buy her. I did buy her a really mini one. But I was like, this one would be really great for like storing all of their... I think they have three tea sets, my kids. So you could store tea sets in here. You could store food in here. Um, like, play food. And it would be really cute and lovely. So it's still here. I haven't parted with it yet. But that is a probability of what will happen with this. I then bought myself a big one. And this one is lined. So my plan for this one is that it can become a scrappy project like a complete scrappy basket and just put all of my yarn scraps in here and when I'm ready just pull out whatever I'm working on it's so pretty although it also may just become a picnic basket if we ever get to the point that we would carry a basket like this for a picnic because it is pretty and then this is the final one that I got which is also very pretty Again, I could see it as a picnic basket. Um, I may even with this one have it as a more of a display thing. So put it up somewhere and have something coming out of it. Um, I do... Yeah. I, don't, I like baskets. Alright. So that... Oh, actually, this one I was thinking. This would be a really cute sewing basket to put, like, English paper piecing, and you can have fabric and all of your tools in here and just carry that around and so yeah. I like baskets, what can I say? So that is all the new things I have received, I'm pretty sure. And that is the end of look, I'm gonna say that's the end of the knitting content, but that's not necessarily true because every week when I start chatting about life, I always talk more about knitting because it's just so intertwined. Um, but that's the end of the planned knitting content. If you are just here for the projects and things, thank you for coming in, dropping by. It's been lovely to share this time with you. If you want to hear a bit more about my life and what's been going on, and most probably how knitting and crafting comes into that, stick around and let's chat. Um, so I've mentioned this before. I've been to a work conference, which again was not craft related but I was able to do some craft and after I taught the embroidery workshop it was really lovely because all around people were embroidering. Not many people brought knitting, one of my friends definitely did and we definitely knit together, but a lot of women would embroider and if they were playing games at night they'd be sitting there doing some embroidery between turns it was really lovely to see and to just see all these women completely embrace it so much fun. Um, after the work conference we did go on a holiday. It was to Greece, to one of the islands in Greece. It was really amazing to see such old architecture. Like it was so old. Some of the places um, that we visited were being built when Daniel was in Babylon. Daniel is one of the authors of one of the books of the Bible, the one called Daniel. Um, yeah, it was just amazing to be around buildings that were so old and rocks that had been cut that long ago. We did get to pick up a few souvenirs from different places. So we have a little bit of pottery that, as far as we can tell, dates back to well before... Um, I was going to say well before 0 BC. Um, like, dates back to like the 3rd, 4th, 5th century BC. So, quite old. Very exciting. Um, maybe even the 8th or 9th century, like it's, it's old. Um, yeah, so it was really exciting to see and it was really strange to see all these things that were so old that were just almost disregarded because they had so many big things that were old and they had so many things in museums that were old that they just couldn't put everything in museums or whatever and so there was just things lying around that were old but kind of people didn't care that they were old where for us it was amazing and gobsmacking and so cool 
So that was nice and it was a good holiday in that um, we didn't have to cook. And if you have kids you'll know how lovely that is to have a break from the cooking because with the cooking comes the dishes and the keeping kids entertained while you're cooking and everything. We were staying in a place we were able to, by the grace of God, we were able to go to a place that had breakfast and dinner included. Um, and so we would, when we were ready in the morning, go down and eat breakfast. And sometimes breakfast was stressful because we had two toddlers who were running around and wanting to, you know, eat all the desserts for breakfast. But also we didn't have to clean up. We could go when we left, like when we left, that was it. And when it was dinner time, we could go down and go back up to our room. Like it was just so lovely to not have the cleaning that goes with that. Um, on the flip side, since I've been home, I've been doing so much more cooking than I normally do because it's fresh and it's fun again. And I'm working on keeping the kitchen clean. Um, again, this is anyone really. If you like cooking, you'll probably agree that you do not like cooking in a cluttered kitchen or a dirty kitchen. I hate it. But I also am not the best housekeeper. I don't keep things clean very well. Um, my mum, someone asked my mum when I was 18 and I moved into someone else's house, she said, how will you feel if they teach your daughter to clean um, when you didn't? And mum said, that would be amazing. I taught my daughter so many things. I did not teach her to clean. If someone else can teach her that, good on them. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not the cleanest person. I, I like order, but I also like things. And order and things don't always go together. So I'm trying to keep the kitchen clean. I'm being very deliberate every night to clean it before I go to bed so that in the morning it's clean and it's easy to clean up while I'm doing stuff with the kids. And then at lunchtime I can cook and we do most of our main meals at lunchtime so I can do a big lunch, clean up again, and then when it comes to dinner, leftovers or whatever small things I need to do, but always in a clean kitchen. And it's working pretty well. There was one night that me and my husband were like, we just need to go to bed because we've just done a huge amount of work and it was late and we're like, we will do this in the morning. And we did. First thing in the morning after we'd listened to the Bible together, we cleaned the kitchen. And yeah, it's working well. Um, this has been inspired by a magazine that I found. So I like reading magazines. I like reading knitting magazines, um, sewing magazines, and cross-stitch magazines. I just like looking at all the patterns. Well, I have a library app that allows me to do that. And every now and then I'll go on and I'll just find all my favourite magazines and I'll flick through them on the app to see what new patterns are out and be inspired. Um, and my library changed which app they're using sometime since I last looked at it. And so I found the new app and I logged in and the first magazine that came up was Declutter Your House by Good Housekeeping. I like Marie Kondo. I like watching things. I was like, oh yeah, I'll have a look at that. And basically it's a 28 day plan to declutter your house and you do one little bit and it has like outlined day one, you do this, day two, you do this, day three, you do this. Um, sometimes like day seven and eight might be combined one project over two days. But the idea is that you spend maybe 45 minutes, sometimes more, sometimes less, working on an area of your house. Um, I'm doing it a little bit more relaxed in that I might spend two days doing it, um, something that the book says to in one day. So it's not going to be done in 28 days, but it will be done thoroughly. And because they tell you what part next, it's very simple. Um, they also give you like some some things so that you can take notes as you go. They have a plan, a planner, so you can plan it out in detail. All these things I love. And then they have articles on each one. And so I love reading articles about cleaning much more than I like cleaning. It inspires me. It makes me want to do something. But I never has one article inspired me to do a whole house. Not going to happen. However, this one has an article for each area. And so what I'm doing, rather than reading the whole magazine at the beginning, being like, that's so inspiring, and then doing nothing, 
I'm starting at the beginning and I read the article and I work on that area. And then either when I finish that area or at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day where I believe I'm going to finish that area, I'll read the next one so I can start thinking and pondering ideas. But basically I'm not going ahead, I'm just doing it as I'm going to need it. And because I get to read the article, that's motivation enough for me to actually keep going with this. And then they also have things like tips for how to organise your fridge so things last longer, tips for how to clean your kitchen every night so that you're not like constantly feeling like you're starting from scratch. And those tips have been really helpful. And that's how our kitchen has stayed clean for the last few days. Um, still at the very beginning, I think I've done day one and two. Yeah, because day two took a few days. So I'm still working on it. It's still there. It's very exciting and new still. But it's also been amazing to actually look at spaces and be like, what do I need to make this space useful and functional and relaxing? It's really good. So it's good housekeeping. It is a magazine by them called Declutter Your Home or Declutter Your House. Um, but they also have a whole lot of articles online. If you're interested in this kind of thing, you can have a look. But this particular magazine, which walks you through it, is brilliant. And I did get it from my Australian library app, which is... Um, I think it's Libby.com. I have access to it through the Eastern Regionals Library, um, Eastern Regional Libraries. But if you have a library card, probably anywhere in the world, have a look and see what kind of online resources they have. And they may have a subscription to Libby.com as well. Because I think Libby.com is an online library that Eastern Regional Libraries subscribes to so that their users can access things. That's my understanding. It's brilliant. Can recommend. Um, in addition to that, I'm not really reading anything. I've, I've loaned a couple of books from the library app, but I haven't really sat down to read them. But my husband and I have been watching Lego Masters Australia. And that is so much fun. If you like creative things, which I presume you do because you're here, have a look. It's watching people make things out of Lego, but some of the things they make are truly gobsmacking. Like, it's phenomenal. And it's hosted by Hamish Blake, who is an Australian TV radio personality who's just random. He's hilarious. I appreciate his humour. Yeah, it's a good show. I can recommend. Um, it's on Nine now if you're in Australia. What else have we been doing? Um... We've done some home improvements. We have our bin door keeps breaking. And so we went to the local um, DIY shop, construction shop, like a Bunnings or a, um, I can't think of equivalents. Anyway, home improvement store. And bought some hinges for the door. Um, Jordan fixed that. We had a leaky pipe, and by leaky pipe, I mean completely broken pipe. And we managed to get things to fix that, and it's holding so far, so I hope that continues. We got some balcony flowers, so I've potted them, and our balcony now looks pretty again with flowers. Um, they're all geraniums, but there's different shades of pink and some red. So, very nice. I'm very much looking forward to canning season again, because, yeah. That'll be coming soon. We'll get to make pickles. We'll get to make jam. Strawberries have started coming out, but they're not big yet. Give it a few weeks and we will be inundated with strawberries. Ah, so much fun. So, yeah, lots and lots and lots of really fun things coming up. And that we're doing. What else? Um, I know I've mentioned here before about preschool things. Today was Zechariah's first day back at preschool after all of our travel and things, so I'm not sure how he's going. I'm looking forward to seeing him tonight, this afternoon, this afternoon, and hearing about that. On holidays, he kept saying he didn't want to go back, but this morning, when we were like, oh, maybe you shouldn't go today, he was like, oh, no, I can go today. And we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so he went. Um, I'm not as nervous about the prospect of him maybe not going to preschool for a while and staying home with me holidays like it's a different rhythm 
but if I need to bring a holiday rhythm to everyday life because I'm at home with two kids, I can do that. And holidays have given me that kind of boost of, yeah, this is nice and we can figure this out. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. He, yeah, I think the biggest thing is if I do that, I still need to figure out a way that he can be exposed to Polish a lot so that he can actually continue to learn and pick that up. And that'll be harder if he's at home all day. Yeah. Anyway, he won an art competition. He came first place in an art competition that was a spring-based one, like as in spring, the season, art competition. Um, so yeah, really proud of him for that. He, yeah, I don't have a picture here of it because they asked if they could, uh, his preschool asked if they could submit it and we said yes and then afterwards I was like, we should have taken a picture. But it was a really lovely picture and he won first prize. So I don't know if we'll get the picture back or not, but he will get a prize for that. And I don't know what it is, but I'm excited for him. And I'm hoping that that will help him be a little bit more excited about preschool. Um, yeah, we'll see. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Sorry. Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been really lovely to be back and share with you all of my crafty things from the last month. Oh boy, it's been a lot. Um, yeah, I can't tell you where we're going to go from here. I may come back next time and be like, I'm all about the knitting. Like, I don't want to do any stitching. I'm all about the knitting. Or I could come back next time and be like, hey, I've just spent the last two weeks sewing clothes. I have no idea. But I look forward to seeing you here again in a couple of weeks. If you want to, um, if you want to support me and help other people find this podcast, then please hit like, hit subscribe. If you subscribe, then next time I put a video up, you'll get a notification that there's a new video up. And yeah, I really enjoy doing this. I really enjoy sharing all of this with you. And come back in two weeks to see what I've been doing. Like I said, no idea. But I'm going to keep doing what makes me happy for crafting. Thanks. I'll see you later. Bye.